So some of the things that we have in store for today, for today's class, are that we are going to uh, work with linking to external pages and work with more of the page widgets, some of them that we haven't quite addressed yet within the project, and then maybe also a look at other, other ones that we haven't touched yet over at jQueryMobile.com. And most likely we'll get into JavaScript, the basics of JavaScript. There's, of course, a variety of skills and abilities in these classes, and some of you might already have some experience in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Most of us are in the intermediate to beginning level. Some of us are intermediate to advanced, and that's all right. So again, when we get to the JavaScript stuff, we'll start with the basic stuff. And then once we get a little more acclimated with that, we'll, go, we'll start going forward with it. And uh, again, we're going to end up with uh, being able to create a map via JavaScript, a live map. We're going to uh, work with local storage, which is very basic ways to save data persistently. We'll see why that's important. And then we'll go on to other things like user agent string detection, because our project, remember, is, um, is uh, AWD, Adaptive Web Design, as opposed to RWD, Responsive Web Design. So I'll bring that up again, what the difference is when we get to that. Wrapping up the project with icons and such. In the end, we'll, we'll, we'll reach us next week and preparing for native app development and then the brand new class in two weeks. I'm going to pass out the um, sign-in sheet and then we'll get started. So you can get a copy of the, of the work from last time from the network folder. It's in the network folder, of course, with last Tuesday's date. I'm going to copy that and add today's date. Today is the 25th. So over on my flash drive, I've got my work, and I'm going to make a copy for today's work. So I've been working with jQuery Mobile and all of the technologies of, um, for this class for a few years now, and I've seen it evolve. I was using jQuery Mobile 1.2 and then 1.3, and now they're on 1.4. 1.5 will be out eventually. You can already go to the site and start to see what the preview, preview code is. But the point is that things change, things evolve. So even if you learn something at a certain point and it works, maybe you also want to educate yourself to what the changes are, what, ha what, what has improved and what has changed and such. I remember the way to make that pop-up box happen used to be different. They used to attach the, the behavior for it to be a dialog box. They would attach it directly to the, um, the link. And now it's attached to the section, the screenful. So the screenful has the meaning that this is a pop-up box. It used to be attached to the, the link. And they both worked. But then, because jQuery Mobile and many of these projects are open source, there's a lot of groups involved in shaping its development. And so consensus is going towards some aspects. So that's just an example of things changing. I want to do something here that I haven't uh, added to classes previously, so you'll be the first to see this. I was browsing the jQuery mobile documentation a couple of days ago, uh, just seeing what's new and so forth, and I found something that I thought would be useful to start to implement. So in our project, let's go ahead and edit the, uh, the index file. Let's bring up the index file in Notepad++. And I'll also run it launch it in Firefox. What I want to address is an aspect of user interface design and user experience, UX, user experience, user interface design, UI. These are important factors and considerations because we may be very knowledgeable about the code and we may be able to write the code and we can do it in our sleep and all of that, but maybe sometimes we don't have the perspective of the other side of the coin, which is design-wise. 
I've seen so many examples of, of Java software, for example, that works really well but looks really bad because traditional Java apps, they were very, very basic. They had the classic gray background. It looked just stock document, uh, stock apps. And then the Java developer was very talented, but not visually talented, perhaps. So user experience is important. User interface, does your app look good? Does it function well as well? There's a little, there's a little nagging element that's happening here in the nav bar. When we look at the home screen, we've got home, art, and computers. When you click on art, it goes over to art and computers. And we're seeing that the highlight happens, right? We did that by looking at class in the code line 36, UI button active, UI state persist. That caused the, um, when you click, there was a blue color that appeared briefly, and if we did not have UI button active, the blue would go away, so that if we were on the home screen, it would not be highlighted. And then when we stay on that page, we have UI state persist, so that the blue, again, stays active as we traverse the app. Something as basic as that, the app will still work if we don't have class active and persist, It'll still work, but then it isn't as effective for the user. It could be confusing to the user. Unless we not noted elsewhere within the interface what page we're on, people might not know what page are we on. The only indication on the home page that we have that we're on the home page is that the home button is active, highlighted because of the class that was added there, now it gives the user a little bit more orientation to know where we're at. I want to build on top of that because notice, here's a little bit of confusion. Uh, I can obviously put my mouse over a button and I get the little finger to click and computers, but I can also do so on home, can't I? I get the feedback that this is clickable. Why would this be clickable if I'm already in this section? Little minor things like that also relate to user experience. Those are sort of like the details. It's important to mind the details. So we can add a little bit of jQuery mobile code here to deactivate that button so that it's no longer clickable, so that it gives better user feedback in that we have navigated to this page, therefore there's no need to click on it anymore. So let's go to line 36. And as I said, I was just browsing the, the jQuery mobile documentation and taking a look at stuff that I've read before, but because this stuff evolves, something new stood out to me. Uh, we're going to add to the class. We've got UI button active, UI state persist. Within the quotes, within the class, we're going to add a new item. This is UI dash state dash disabled. Disabled. UI dash is a prefix basically that makes sense because of jQuery mobile and jQuery, specifically jQuery, I believe. UI dash. We have UI dash per state and UI dash um, button. So UI dash button, it's active. UI state persists. UI state disabled. And there's other such classes that we can work with as per the documentation. But this one, let's save it and run it. Notice it's still highlighted. It's still active. It's been grayed out a little bit and then I can no longer click. This is another way perhaps to improve the user interface user experience that this is no longer clickable. I'm on that screen, therefore I no longer need to click. The other ones behave the same as before, of course. And then when I go to art, since I never applied it there, I would have to apply it per button. Notice we go back to home and then it's deactivated. This 
Um, we're going to use this if you'd like you can use this because you could say well it looks like it's too act deactivated like it like I would still like the words to be more visible I don't like that overlay I don't like that it's kinda of grayed out and so forth and that's a legitimate concern if you don't want that sort of design to it we would have to rewrite a little bit of the CSS so that it looks a little different um, I wasn't gonna quite get into that we'd have to look it up but at the very least, very quickly, we can use UI state disabled on this button or any other button. Let's say uh, we had a button to email um, the developer, but maybe um, that needs to be disabled because for some reason, you know, the problems have been fixed. I don't know, I'm just thinking of a, of a time when you might still want a button active, I mean a button visible but deactivated. That's what UI state would best do. So let's jump over to the art section so that we may do the same for the art button in the art section. So we have the... I'm gonna search ID equals art. That should jump us over to the section of the art screen which is about line 80. We've got the aside there for the panel, so skip that, of course. And then we scroll down to line 114, actually. That's the line that's got the button for the art link. And we want to disable that, so within the class, within the quotes, we're writing UI-state dash disabled past tense disabled and then obviously you need to do the same thing for the PC screen so go find the PC screen the PC button and add the UI state disabled to that So I will search ID equals PC. And that takes me to the general area, and I found it at line 190. UI dash state dash disabled. So you should save and run that, and you'll see now when you go from section to section, the button is still there, it's still visible, it's still changed to that blue color, it's no longer clickable. Then the next question might be, well, how do I change that blue color? It doesn't line up with my the design of my, of my site. We're still going to get to that a little later. We will be able to fully customize all the colors and all of those details of the app, of course, but we'll, we'll get to that uh, probably next class. So I want to see my results. I'm on home, that's disabled, good. I go to art, same thing. Computers, same thing. These two are still, they still highlight when I put my mouse over them. They still work just fine. But the ones that I added UI state disabled now are disabled, no longer clickable, tappable. Thinking about this in the longer term, when this is on our mobile device, this also applies. On a mobile device, we don't have hover. Here on the computer, I can put my mouse over the button and I get that hover color. We don't have that on mobile, but we would still find it useful to have the button disabled on mobile so that a person, again, doesn't try to click something that looks like it's clickable. The, speaking of the computer's screen, I'd like to address the, um, this list view component. I think it works really well for it being a, a, a humble bullet point list. Right, Starting at about line 205, it's a bullet point list. 
that has dividers and and the buttons and such and it works really well but I think it could work a little better in that it, it takes up too much space its inherent behavior is that it goes almost like 95 percent <coughs> of the size of the screen of the viewport it fills up a lot of that space I want it to maybe have a little bit of empty space on the edges a little bit of a breathing room on the edges I think it's taking up too much space so what we'll do here is we'll write a little bit of a little bit of CSS to rein that size in the way this will work is well we've got this list view on this screen and we can write some CSS that targets it of course but then I might have a list view on another screen and another screen and another screen so again that's where CSS comes in specifically classes so we're going to attach a class to this uh, element and then define the look of it inside the element uh, so back to our code and what we'll do starting on line 205 this is where the, U, the UL is at and of course there's many ways to do this but here's the way that we'll do it we'll wrap a div around the whole UL so I'm going to make a note. At about line 204, the div should start, and then I have to find the end of that. After UL, I'm going to follow my red line. That's at line 236. So 230, 204 to 236. I just made a note there because as I start to write this div, let's write a div right before the UL, I need to, of course, remember to close it. I need to Wrap, use that to wrap it around the UL and the end of the UL is line 235 so we need a, a new line 236 slash div so I've wrapped a div around it all this is optional but I'm gonna indent the whole UL so that I see that it's inside of that div and remember this trick if you select far. If you select if you select the UL down to slash UL and then press tab, everything in between tabs. So I don't have to waste my time tabbing 40 times each line. You can select everything. <coughs> slash UL back to UL. <coughs> And tab it. And that's optional, of course, but I think it's useful because then I see that UL is inside of that particular div. <coughs> the point of putting this div is that it is a generic container that then we can use to control content inside of it. I want that list view item to be to not take up as much space horizontally. So within this div, inside of the div tag, we will add a class. <coughs> Remember, a class we can reuse multiple times per project. And the purpose of this div is to constrain the list view a little bit. So we'll call it list view size. I often try to name classes um, that would make sense if I look at them in my long CSS file. And perhaps using either tags or concepts of what I'm trying to control. If I had gone here to name it something about UL, I think that would be too generic because I might use ULs elsewhere, like my navbar. I'm trying to control a list view, so I've called it list view size. And yes, I could, I could call it list capital view size, but I'll keep it list view capital S because I'm thinking of list view as one word. Now that I've wrapped the div here and added a class, I can define what does that class mean. So we need to go open our CSS file and write what's the meaning of list size, list view size. 
So back in the um, folder, let's right-click to edit Codica Extra CSS. So let's edit the CSS file. Let's jump to the end of the document. So I've already got two rules here, close right, grid align center. And it's only been two days, but I've, I've already forgot what these do. Anyone remember? Close right, what? Close right, anyone remember that? That was the corner of the, uh, the button that was in uh, the side panel. Exactly. That was, the, that was to get that little close button to the right side of the, of the panels. So perhaps that name might have been a little bit better, like close don't change this but close BTN right you know maybe that would have reminded us a little faster what does that do again close right maybe wasn't the best name if we did change that to close BTN right we would have to then of course change it in the HTML file and that's simply for us to remember what does this code do we have grid align center I think that makes pretty much sense right from its name uh, this is a grid that is aligning uh, to the center of the screen and so the one we just wrote a moment ago, it's a class, so of course it starts with the dot. We called it list view size. We have the curly braces. And what we'll do is, well, right now, basically the list view is taking up as much space as it can. 100% of the space given to it, basically. So we'll say with 75%. Let's start off with 75%. See how much space that takes up. Okay, save both files. And save both files and then um, see the result. Perfect. It did 75%. Well, not so perfect. It's only, it's leaning to the left. It's always going to be 75% of the screen size, but starting from the left. Okay, but we can do one more thing here. We can do this. If we, if we add, we've got width of 75%. And then if we add margin, auto, let's see how that works. Margin, auto. There we go. Centered. What's happening here is we've applied a width, we've applied a constraining width to the div. The div wanted to stretch out as much as it could, as much space as it could take because inside of the div was the list view that was also wanting to stretch out as much as it could. So we said, uh, let that div only use 75% of the space that it's sitting upon. So then it said, great, 75%. And then it leaned to the left, because then that was the default. So then we said margin, um, auto. And the thing with everything, basically, that we deal with CSS is that there is something known as the box model in place. Let me make a note here. I'm going to write some CSS notes, or comments, that is. CSS uses the box model. Everything that we see on screen basically is in a box, even if it doesn't look like it. Even a circle, even a circular button that's on screen really is in a box, and a box has four sides to it, doesn't it? So
we need to think about the box that encompasses all elements on the screen. And we need to think about it specifically in the order of top, right, bottom, left. Every box that is on the screen, visible or invisible, has those four sides. And CSS, the standard, is set up so that when we define elements of the box, we should think of them in that way. And notice it's clockwise. So if I'm looking in your direction, top, top of the screen, right, bottom, left. That's clockwise, isn't it? Top, right, bottom, left. So what I wrote on up here, margin auto, one way to expand that, that's a short a shorthand, would have been to write margin auto, 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 auto. We're saying put an automatic amount of margin or space on the top and on the right, and on the bottom, and on the left. And what that does in essence is it creates an equal amount of space on the left and the right, therefore centering the content. So think about it sort of like this. Um, don't have a great example in paper, but let's say I've got this item here. This is a little bit of graphic design. Um, at the top here, there's an element that's perfectly centered. This is perfectly centered because I know that the width of this sheet of paper is eight and a half inches. So I can do some math and figure out exactly is four and a quarter, right in the middle. So it's centered. If I go then horizontal, now my width has changed to what? Eleven. What's exactly in the middle of eleven? 5.5. 5. 5. 5. 5 and a half. <clears throat> so the exact center would be 5 and a half. So we can always determine the exact center of this document because we know its dimensions. But what if I get, instead of letter-sized paper, I get legal-sized paper? Now, what's the center point? Well, I need to know what the width is, I need to know what the height is. Uh, thank you, nerds. So, um, the, the, the point here with computers is that I don't have specific inches. This stuff changes, doesn't it? It changes with this monitor, with your monitor, with this mobile device. This all changes, uh, horizontal, vertical, and everything. This all changes. So if we use auto right here, that helps alleviate that. An automatic amount of space will be added on the left and the right and the top and the bottom. And that, in essence, centers the design. So what we could do just for fun is, if we know that we're dealing with the top, the right, the bottom, and the left, we could do this. We could say auto, no, we'll say, uh, this, just do like this, Set, uh, 25px auto, 25px auto. Those four values again, top, right, bottom, left. On the right side, I'm saying automatic amount of space. On the left side, automatic. And then on the top and bottom, 25 pixels. What that should do then is... It still keeps it in the center, and then we might have the top, uh, some top margin, or top space, and so forth. Um, but here we would be targeting the four sides independently. I could say how much space at the top and how much at the bottom. See that made it a little more obvious. But 125 pixels. I didn't see too much of a difference before. But now I've got 125 pixels dividing this element with that element because I've said the top value, push it 125 pixels from the top, on the right side automatic, on the bottom whatever appears below that will have 25 pixel margin down there, and then again automatic on the left. So this is the concept of the box model. We can control all four sides of any element, even if the element is a, is a circle or a or an octagon, there's always an invisible box around everything. 
So that little segue was just to explain <clears throat> why does margin auto work. If we put it back, it goes back how it was. The element centers. There's an automatic amount of space there based on other factors. And therefore our list view doesn't look as big, a little bit more friendly. If you stretched it out that far, it wasn't, uh, I think it looked a little weird. And that was the default, to stretch out as much as it can. No questions so far. Okay. Yes. CSS, when you run CSS, you put like uh, in this uh, mark, you like, uh, does actually CS, CSS actually read it for or not? Well, this is a comment, so... It's a comment, no. yeah. Exactly. So that's a comment between those two markers, or tags. They're commented out, so the web browser will ignore them. Okay, not so processed. Okay, so basically, in this case, like, uh, this list view size will take care of this box. Say that again? Sorry? Say that again? That my list view size well, the the box is always there. Okay. The box is always there, except it, it's just that in this case we are then specifically addressing aspects of the box. It's always there. So since we made this a class, then that means that we can apply it to any other list view uh, component that we may create, which is useful. We don't have any more I don't believe we have any more in the do in the project, but if we if we did, then we can easily apply it. Again, that's the power of CSS. The um, the picture that we've got on the home screen and the different one on the computer screen, we did that trick. Remember that. It's a large picture, and depending on the size of the person's screen, this is how much shows up for me. And then it, as I, if I have a larger screen or go landscape mode or whatever, I see more of the picture. And that's a kind of cool effect, but I'm not liking overall that it's such a huge, such a big picture vertically. And that's a consequence of having a, a big square picture. Um, so what we're going to do, in, and also to kind of keep in line a little bit more with the branding of the college, we're going to borrow some, some pictures from the college's official website and use those official pictures in the app. And then we'll see how we can also style those pictures. So on your web browser, let's go to the college's homepage, sdce.edu. I'm going to borrow some of their pictures because they've already been set up perhaps for web viewing. These that we got from that other site might not really have been set up for our purposes. So we're going to borrow some of these pictures. Um, the ones that we'll borrow are, if you click on if you these four sections, programs, student services, job, training, and organization, uh, we're going to borrow these pictures. So click on programs. This top picture, notice it's a nice wide picture. It's not that tall, which I think will work better in our app. Uh, so that picture that you see up here, go ahead and right-click it. We'll select Save Image As. I'm in Firefox, so it says Save Image As. If you're in Chrome, it might say something slightly different. So save that image, and select to save it in your project folder in the Images folder. So mine's on my flash drive in my project. Today's date, mobile website, images. We have a folder that will hold all of our images. So I'm saving the first image. Well, I'm thinking of I'm thinking of changing the name actually because I might not know exactly what it is. ORG, when I when I try to access it, I might not remember what's ORG image. I'm going to try instead to save it as uh, maybe programs. That maybe might remind me a little better that this is the programs. Or I could save it like, you know, students in classroom, although the other ones are very similar to that. 
So uh, I'm going to say, you can leave the name, but I'm going to change it to Programs. Or maybe a better name. Anyone have a better idea for, for a name that's more memorable? Home might work, but then I might use it elsewhere, but that could be a possibility. You know, I kind of like prefacing it as STCE programs, um, just because then these will also be organized alphabetically if I've got more than one that I took from this site. So I'm going to write STCE dash programs. I'm going to write that down because I know I'll, I'll forget. So we'll save that one. Go over to student services. We want to get this picture. Same thing. So right click, save image as. Saving it in the images folder. This one's called HS banner. So call it SDCE uh, student serve. Again, the name doesn't really matter. Whatever helps you remember them. Can we put the JPEG at the end? That's a good point. It usually does it for you. Let me confirm that it did it. It seemed to have done it for, for me there. So, so I think it'll do it for you. Yeah, you can always confirm it if you're not sure. Sometimes a web browser, for whatever reason, doesn't save it with the extension. So it might be a good idea to add it there anyway, even though it claims it's going to. So I'm going to save that one, SDCE student serve JPEG. I'm going to get the job training graphic. Save image as SDCE dash job train. I still kind of think in terms of like I've been using computers for a while and my first computer was a DOS 3.3 computer and that was all command line interface and I upgraded to DOS 6.2 and then Windows 3.1 and so forth but I still have a lot of the mentality of using short names when we were constrained to the 8.3 format. Remember that? You can only have a file name eight letters long and the extension. I still kind of think like that even though we have like 255 characters to work with so we could easily call this SDCE job training but I'm still thinking in those terms about the limited file sizes. So I'm going to save that. We'll see the organization graphic. Nothing there. What other graphic can we borrow? Maybe some of these logos. That one seems to be... That's a link. It's not saying save image as. And probably, if we really wanted it, we could probably look at their code and figure out what picture that is exactly. So let's see. Let's get some low-hanging fruit. Some low-hanging fruit. Can we get any of these? These pictures down here. We'll borrow these pictures. These seem to be easily right-click and save image of all. Save image as. I'm back on the home screen. This has a name, Carlos Cortez. Uh, that might be fine, but I'm going to change that a bit. SDCE, under, and then lower cases, Carlos underscore Cortez. I'll get this picture also. about some graduates. So SDCE grads. That's good for the moment, but I want to get... Um, there's a screen in here somewhere where we can get some nice logos some high-quality logos. Um, let's see, I found those somewhere previously. Oh, 
here we go. If you go to the very top, if you hover over organization and then go to style guide and logos, there they will give us some nice logos to use in the app, in the project. So hover over organization and click on style guide and logos. Here we go. So I like that first one. I like that one there also. Okay, so um, he gives it to us in ping or EPS. Uh, we want the ping version, so if you click ping, Yeah, that's kind of odd that it looks like a link, but it's not quite a link, so we'll just right-click their picture. Save image. We're going to get this first one here, and I'm going to get the last one, this vertical one. Yes. far right-hand side of the link that it actually shows like right in front of the G. Oh, look at that. The G is clickable. <laughs> Yeah, so there's several ways to do this uh, view image, and then we can save it there also. So in any event, we're going to save the ping version. Whoops, we're going to save the ping version of the first and the last picture. Go ahead and save those two. I didn't see what the file names were. What's that? No, I would still keep it in images because these icons are specifically the icons for jQuery mobile. And I could put them in there, but I don't, I don't want to quite mix them up. So I'm going to save the first one on top. Uh, this is called CE Logo Main. I think well, I'll, I'll continue to call it SDCE Logo Main. If you didn't change its name, that's fine. But there's SDCE Logo Main. I'm going to save that one. And then the one at the bottom also. And that one is CE Logo Vert. SDCE Logo Vert. So now we've got a few official pictures that we can work with. I want to incorporate some of these things into the app now. This picture I, I want to use on the home screen. This is one that, I've, uh, that we've used before in previous classes that works well because it's, it's wide enough and again it'll work with that effect that we did that the wider the person's screen is the more of that picture it'll show. Obviously at a certain point the image cuts off but that's for a very very wide screen. Um, so that picture was the um, SDCE programs in notepad then we'll go over to our index file we'll jump back to the um, to the home section specifically line 58 line 58 should be where we've set our image the source the image is inside of the images folder, that's part of the path, and then we have to change that file name to sdce programs jpeg and the alt text I'll change that, it's no longer the library so we'll say sdce programs that's written with capital letters and so forth because it is a human readable bit of code. It's not for the computer really, it's for the for the person. If the person has a screen reader, this will read to them that alt text when it runs when it comes across the picture. So let's see how does that look with the new picture. So this is what I'm saying that if a person has a smaller kind of smartphone like that, 
that'll look pretty good. And then if they go horizontal, they'll get a little bit more. At a certain point, the picture ends and you'll have a gap. But that's going to look pretty well at different sizes. Question? Question there? Yeah, mine too, because when we run out of space for the picture, it, there's no more picture. So if we had a wider picture to work with, we could avoid that. But when it's going to be a, a tall and thin kind of phone or even a tablet, certain dimensions of it will fit just fine. I want to use another picture for my computer's screen. We can use the one of student services. And that's at line 202. In line 202, then I will change that to SDCE student serve JPEG and the alt text I'll write student services. And when I check my results then, so I've got the picture and then we have different sizes of it. Again, this is part of the, the design process to uh, these pictures, we just borrowed them from the site, which may not be the perfect examples to use in the project. Uh, if we have uh, a device this small, well, it's kind of cutting off his head. So right there, what we would do is we would have to write a little bit of a CSS for that particular picture. In that case, then this CSS that we were using for both pictures... Um, wide image, then it wouldn't quite be applying to that one picture. We'd have to write some more CSS to, um, to move that picture over. Remember when uh, we had this discussion a few weeks ago about moving that picture over to the left? We'd have to do that for this particular picture. Um, at the moment, I'll, I'll leave it as is, but that's something to think about if we did want to further uh, refine <coughs> the project. I want to add one of these pictures that we borrowed over to the About screen. The About screen, I want to put in that one of those logo pictures, the vertical one, might be a good one. So we need to find our About SDCE screen in the index file. It's at about line 260. This is where we have the About section. And remember, this behaves like a pop up box because it's got a data role page and data dialog true. In the article, I want the image to appear first, so we'll write the image tag. 
SRC. That one was called SDCE Logo Vert or something. Yes. Dot ping. So SDCE dash logo dash vert dot PNG. We'll probably have to add a little CSS to to corral it a little bit better, but we'll see how it looks like so far. Image source sdce logo vertping oh. Always forgetting that images folder. Images slash sdce. picture shows up but it, I would like it centered. Do you notice it's it's a little it's it's to the left. Um, so we'll write some CSS to get that centered. Although I, it, it's kind of cool that it blends in the color of the of the background of that ping blends in with the same color as the as the uh, pop-up box. But anyway, it's it's too far to the left. So what we'll do is actually, I want, right now, if we only centered the picture, the, the text would still be to the left. Maybe I also want the text centered below it. So one way we can do it again is we can use a div. You should be seeing a div as a generic container that we can then use to control elements on screen. So we could wrap a div around both the image and the, the paragraph, and then uh, probably maybe just easily add a text align center or the margin again. We'll see how it goes. So let's, uh, let's wrap a div around both the current paragraph and the image. Give that, we'll make a class for it. Maybe we'll call this div center. This class is to center divs. And again, it's something, if you're not used to CSS, something you'll need to remember. Don't write a dot here. It's just the name of the class. If you write a dot there, that won't work. You write the dot when we define the CSS um, selector in the CSS file. So class equals div center, capital C. We'll switch over to the CSS file. And then at the bottom, we will define dot div center. And I think we can just do. text dash align center There we go, so then that uh, gets centered. So here's that code, dot div center text dash align colon center. And I applied that class to that div that holds 
the um, the content inside of the inside of the box, the dialog box. All right, let's save our work and we'll take the first break. When we come back, we will address linking to external content. General question? Yes. So I'll put the index back. Let's take a break. We'll be back in 10 minutes and then we'll go on.